that type of person, it's everybody else's fault. It's never them. They will never point the finger back at themselves. And again, like I said earlier, thanks to all these false religions, thanks to all of this crazy ideologies, these pastors who won't be accountable for teaching the word of God, <laughs> this is what we end up with. People don't want to take accountability. God says, hold yourself accountable first. Stop pointing the finger. You're going to be held accountable. And everything that you said, everything that you do, everything that you think is going to be brought out into justice. You're going to be held accountable for it, so why not make it a good accountability instead of a bad? Goddamn, you have turned your back on Tyrone for Joe Byron. And the moment that you don't have Joe Byron's house clean when they come inspect it, they're going to kick your black ass out the street. Mm. Tyrone just wanted you to cook, clean, and shut up. But Joe Byron said, oh, well, we'll give you this house for $50 a month or whatever. And it's say what? Or whatever, as long as you don't let Pause. Tyrone stay over here. So you see what's going on? And that's the end game. That's what these other countries want for you. They get up over you when you are in sin, when you don't want to be held accountable, when you don't want to take on responsibility. That's how they stay on top of us, by keeping us in the midst of sin, by making it easy for you to sin. You ain't even got to lift a finger now. All you got to do is complain. And, and, and the, the, the process starts. You could be happily married for years, have children, everything been going fine. She watches a TV program and then has a bright idea and then tries to execute on that and now all hell breaks loose. All right, Shalom family, Most High Christ bless y'all. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. I want to talk about uh, something that's been on my mind since last week. I heard uh, class last week. I think, uh, who was it? Also, the water brought it out. I think, and it was accountability. And that, that word stuck in my head all week. I was like, I got to do a class on it. Accountability, accountability. So that is the topic for today. Held accountable. That is the topic. Held accountable. What? So let's go ahead and get the... Uh, Definition of accountability. All right. Accountability. The fact or condition of being accountable. Responsibility. Responsibility. Accountability. Mm -hmm. Similar. Similar. Responsibility. Responsibility. We are responsible. You know what we're responsible for, family? Is we're responsible for keeping God's laws. We're responsible for these laws, statutes, and commandments. That's right. All right. What's the next one say? Liability. We are liable for keeping God's laws. Okay. Answerability. Give me, give me definition of accountable. Accountable. Of a person, organization, or institution. Mm -hmm. Required or expected to justify actions or decisions. Required or what? Required or expected to justify actions or decisions. All right. So you are required to keep God's laws. You know this truth, Israel. You know you uh, are the chosen of the most high, you are required to keep these laws. Some of them similar words, responsible for keeping God's laws, liable for keeping God's laws. You are answerable to God's laws. You are chargeable for either keeping or denying God's laws. So I, I think they get the understanding on it. Yes, sir. We are required to keep God's laws at all times. Let's go ahead and start with the scriptures because it's, it's in the entire book from, from beginning to end. From Genesis to Revelations, we are required to keep God's laws. We are held accountable for keeping God's laws. Watch this. Let's open up with Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. He made it very easy to understand. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. Mm -hmm. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? For being chosen out of many, out of all the nations, out of all the people, we were chosen. So what is it that is required of us because we were chosen? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, and to love him, mm -hmm. and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Very simple, right? Self-explanatory. Don't need a whole lot. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's start at verse 1. Again, accountability. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. Mm -hmm. 
and it shall come to pass. Mm -hmm. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you shall listen to the words that the Lord is giving you. To observe and to do all his commandments. To keep the laws. Which I command thee this day. Read. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. All praises. So you will be held accountable in a right way for keeping God's laws. Skip to verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. But if you won't keep these laws, statutes, and commandments, read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Come on. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So you're going to be held accountable whether you keep the laws or whether you're not keeping the laws. You're going to be held either to a good standard where you get a good reward or you're going to be held for that bad standard. And you're going to get a punishment, right? Give me Amos chapter 3, start at verse 1. Again, accountability all throughout the scriptures. The book of Amos chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Read. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. So notice right here, he's talking to Israel out of all the families of the earth, meaning the other nations. He's talking strictly to Israel right now. Let's see what he says. Saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Of everyone that was created on the earth. The only ones that I've dealt with is you, Israel. Read. Therefore, I will punish you for all of your iniquities. Therefore, I will what? Therefore, I will punish you. I will hold you accountable. Read. For all of your iniquities. For all of your iniquities. So first and foremost, Israel, family, we are held accountable for what? To uphold and keep God's laws. Okay, There's no denying it. There's no question about it. Now, does that mean that all the other nations are have an excuse? Or does that mean that they get away with anything? No. At the end of that day, of, of the day, everybody is going to be held accountable. You know. First and foremost, Israel, we get our time, we're first up. And then after that, after our judgments, after our consequences, repercussions, good or bad, then towards the other nations for the things that they've done. Watch this. Um, let's go to the other nations. Go to the book of Judah, chapter 16. And we're going to go to verse 17. Judah 16 and 17. The book of Judith, chapter 16, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred. Woe to all the nations that rise up against who? God's kindred, God's people. Read. The Lord Almighty will take vengeance of them in the day of judgment. The Most High is going to hold them accountable for their actions, for the things that they've done coming against his family. Read. And putting fire and worms in their flesh. Read. And they shall fill them. And weep forever. And that's going to be their payment. That's going to be their recompense for the things that they've done to his children, to his chosen people. You know, hey, it's funny. It's funny. I'm glad I brought that scripture up because uh, you, see in the, you see in the news, you see it all over social media, what Putin did with the, uh, the Russian icons. And now you seeing and hearing about nation. They, they're burning the Bible. They're banning the Bible. They've been doing it, but now even more so that they know Christ is black. Now it's undeniable. It's in their face. Their own people told him Christ was black, and now they don't know what to do. They over there having conniptions. So you can imagine, you can imagine what's getting ready to come down the pipeline, what they're getting ready to do. They're, here come that persecution that Bishop been, has been preparing us for this whole time. So, hey, gird your loins up, Israel. So now, uh, where we okay? Revelations, uh, Revelations 13, 9 and 10. All the nations held accountable for their things. The book of Revelations, chapter 13, verse 9. Mm -hmm. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Read. He that leadeth into captivity Who shall... Who led us into captivity? All the nations, right? All the nations. He that leadeth us into captivity... Shall go into captivity. They have to go into captivity. They will be held accountable for those actions. Uh, it says shall go, or did it say might go? Shall go. Into captivity. They got a choice. Shall go into captivity. It's an option for them. 
shall go into captivity. Read. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. So don't worry about it, Israel. The nations are going to pay for everything that they've done toward God's family, God's chosen ones. A, a, a day of reckoning is coming. And you're seeing that coming down the pipeline as things are being revealed. If you're keeping up with the classes and what bishops are showing, you know time is getting short. It's time to start what? It's time to start getting right. And you know what I like about accountability? When you break it down, it all falls back on you. It all falls back on your own shoulders. You know, it's, it's, it's always break down to what did you do? At the end of the day, you got to answer for yourself. Did you keep God's commandments? Did you repent? Were you honest and true? Did you love your brother and sister? Or did you do something different? We're going to find out. We're going to find out. So, individual accountability. Individual accountability. I want to look in the, at an example of uh, us on the individual accountability. Watch this. Go to, go to Job chapter 38, and we'll start at verse 1. Hey, IT, can you put that picture up of the, of the throne, if you would, please? Hey, Israel, I want y'all to look at this of the throne, Christ on the throne. Yeah, let them see that right there. Y'all see all that power that's sitting on that throne there? Y'all see all the power around the throne? He controls everything. The keys to life and death, the keys to, de what do you say, heaven and hell, uh, controls all the elements. The whole earth itself respects him. And at the end of the day, you got to stand before him and give an account of what you've done. Look at, look at the austereness in his face. It doesn't look like he's going to play too many games, does it? Don't look like he's going to give you too many passes for, for sin. Matter of fact, the scriptures tell you, you're not going to get a pass. So read that. Look, at, Hold that picture right there. Let them see that picture. And read that in, in Job chapter 38, start at verse 1. Watch okay. this. Because Job was held accountable. And things written four times written for our learning, right? So the same way that Job is held accountable, we're going to be held accountable. Read that. Job chapter 38. Start at verse 1. The book of Job chapter 38, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. So imagine that. Job is going through the trials and tribulations. Now he's beside himself. He's talking. He's talking. He's talking. He's rumbling at the mouth. And now all of a sudden, here comes a voice out of the clouds like a whirlwind. And said, mm -hmm. who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge. So the creator is now talking to you. Yeah, he's talking to Job here, but understand, we're going to be in that same position one day where we got to answer for the things that we're saying, for the things that we're doing. And this is who we're going to be standing before. Read. Gird up thy loins like a lion. Excuse me. <laughs> Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee. Watch this. Go back to verse 2. Read verse 2 again. Verse 2, mm -hmm. who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Can you imagine that question being fired at yourself? Who are you that you're going to start questioning the creator? Who are you? This, this is who you got to answer to. I don't know about y'all, but that, that doesn't look like somebody I want to play with. That don't look like somebody I want to, uh, uh, he, he loses love for me. Well, he doesn't trust me. I don't, I don't think I want to be on his bad side uh, come the day of reckoning with him. So he said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? What's the next word he say? Gird up now thy loins like a man. Gird up now thy loins like a man, meaning get ready to be held accountable for the things that you're saying and the things that you've done. Read. For I will. Of thee. He said, I will demand of thee, read, and answer thou me. And, answer thou me. and now you got to give an answer. Yeah, let's get another mic over here. Reader's mic is going out. He said, gird up thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. So you're going to give an account. 
for everything that you've done, everything that you've said, your actions, whether it be good or bad. To that man right there. All right, so go to uh, Matthew 12 and 36. Because Christ told us the exact same thing. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 36. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Every idle word. You know what? That also goes along with every thought. That also goes along with every action. Every idle word. Everything that comes out your mouth, whether it be good or bad, you're going to give an account for. Watch it. Give me Revelations 20 and verse 12. Revelations chapter 20 and verse 12. The book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, mm -hmm. stand before God. Mm -hmm. And the books were open. And the what? And the books were open. Do y'all understand, Israel, that there are angels running around recording everything you think, everything you do, everything you say? And it's being recorded in a book. God is not going to leave out anything. He's not going to forget anything. Read. And another book was opened, mm -hmm. which is the book of life. Mm -hmm. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. So there go judgment day. Everything you said, everything you've done, everything you thought about has been recorded. So you will give an account. Every idle word. All right? So understanding that, knowing that, uh, I would think it'd be in our best interest, Israel, to make sure that what? We're on the right path? To make sure that we are uh, doing a good job of keeping God's commandments, right? Wouldn't you say so? Yes, sir. All right. So let's take a look at it. Watch this. How to get some mercy and grace, even though you're going to be held accountable. Sirach chapter 18, and let's get to verse 20. I want to push through. I know we only got like 35 minutes, so I want to push through so we can, uh, yeah. Sirach 18, verse uh, 20. The book of Sirach, chapter 18, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Before judgment, examine thyself. Before judgment day, before the day comes that you have to deal with the Most High or you deal with Christ, before you receive that uh, accountability of things that you've done and said, it says before any of that happens, look at yourself. Self-reflect. Read. And in the day of visitation, mm -hmm. thou shalt find mercy. And if you find yourself doing what the law tells you to do, doing what the commandments tell you to do, it'll be much easier for you in the day of judgment. Right? Your sins will be covered. Right? Give me uh, Romans 14 and verse 12. The book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 12. So then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So there it is again. Everyone is going to give an individual account of himself, whether it was good, whether it was bad. Read. Let, let us not, therefore, judge one another anymore. Read. But judge this, rather, mm -hmm. that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. So take a look at yourself and seeing what you're doing. Make sure you're not putting any stumbling blocks to make anyone fall out this truth. Whether it be your brother or your sister, young or old, or seasoned or unseasoned. Okay, If you give an account for yourself, again, there'll be some mercy there. If you're following the rules, if you're following what God has put there, what is required of you. Stop and take some time. Literally, take a look in the mirror. At yourself. Be honest with yourself. You know what? That's another thing. You got to be honest with yourself because a lot of people do not want to take accountability. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Christian pastors and, and false religions. You've given these people a, a false sense of security, and they actually think they're going to make it. They never take an honest look at themselves. They're never honest with themselves. Some people hate themselves so much they don't even look at themselves. Terrible, terrible. All right, so where was we at? Romans? Okay, go to 1 Corinthians 11. Watch this. 
accountability at, at all times. 1 Corinthians 11 and uh, verse 28. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. But let a man examine himself. But let a man do what? Let a man examine himself. We hear this every time we break bread, understanding that we're going to be held accountable <laughs> for that sacrifice. Read. And so let him eat of that bread mm -hmm. and drink of that cup. Read. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily mm -hmm. eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. You partook in the bread of wine. You said that you were going to continually do this forever, that you were dedicated to keeping God's laws. You remember the sacrifice that uh, Christ did for you? It says if you eat and drink this what unworthily, you're going to eat and drink damnation to yourself. You will be held accountable. That goes for whether you're in this truth, whether you're not in this truth. If you ever have breaking bread and partake of the wine, you are held liable. That's like a that's like a, 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 a contract, and there is no escape clause on that. Keep reading. Was that thirty one? No. Keep reading. Verse twenty nine. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily mm -hmm. eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Read. Not discerning the Lord's body. Mm -hmm. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Some of us are already beginning to be held accountable. It says. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. That's judgment. That's being held accountable for your actions. Some, some have partaken of bread and wine, and you don't see them next year because they're dead and gone. God held them accountable. Some of us, we, we might get it at the end. Some of us might get it instantaneously. It's all up to the most high. Remember what the scripture says, because the sentence is not executed speedily. You're fully set to do evil. You forgot about being held accountable for the things that you do. All right. Uh, second Esdras. Oh, was that verse 31? No, go to verse 31. Yeah. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. For if we would judge ourselves. For if we would take a look at ourselves. We should not be judged. We should not be judged, meaning what? You'll find mercy. If you're taking an honest look at yourself and keeping the laws, you should not be judged. Meaning you did what you were required to do, so now you're going to get the rewards and not the damnation. All right, so go to 2 Ezra 15. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Woe to them that sin. Woe to them that sin. Death to them that sin. Read. And keep not my commandments. Death saith. to them that sin and don't keep commandments, says who? Saith the Lord. Says the Lord. Read. I will not spare them. I'm going to give them a pass. I will not spare them. No, they, they got grace and mercy. I will not spare them. All they got to do is call on his name. I will not spare them. They got the name, the, the, they got the name and, and they, they say it all the time. I will not spare them. They can wait till they're on their deathbed and then accept Christ's ways like they do in Sunday church. Woe to them that sin uh -huh. and keep not my commandments, Read. saith the Lord. Read. I will not spare them. He will not spare you. You're going to be held accountable. Read. Go your way, mm -hmm. ye children, from the power. Hey, uh, post that, post that uh, picture of Christ on the throne again. He said, I will not spare them. Go your way. Mm. So... There's Christ telling you what? Go your way. Read. Go your way, ye children, mm -hmm. from the power. From the power. Read. Defile not my sanctuary. So you can't even get into the kingdom now because you're in the midst of sin. That man is telling you, you can't get the kingdom. You can't inherit the kingdom because I'm going to hold you accountable for your sins that you didn't repent of. Right? What they say, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping and mourning and gnashing the teeth. Watch this. It's, it's funny how it's funny how we've been set up to where we don't take accountability for our actions. And we think that we don't have to answer to those things. Understanding that there's a time and a trouble that's coming where you're going to be held accountable. And you want to be on God's good side more so than on his bad side. Okay. I want to show some uh some weeping and gnashing of teeth. And this is just being held accountable in the sight of men. You can let alone what's going to happen when Christ comes up. So get the, let me get that first video.
I want y'all to listen to the weeping in the morning and the gnashing of teeth as, as they begin to understand that they finna be held accountable. Listen to it. I know I got to talk over it just a little bit. But, uh, matter of fact, put it on pause. Put it on pause. So in this case here, it was uh, two, two lesbians, I think it was. Yeah, two lesbians. And they ended up killing this little three-year-old child. One was her godmother and the other one was the lover of the godmother. Uh, they, got, uh, they got a guilty judgment from the courts, and now the, the court is getting ready to hand down the sentence and listen to what happens to them. I want to watch what happens to them when this accountability sets in. Go ahead. First, you're going to hear the judge pass down the sentence, and then you're going to hear reality kick in. So go ahead. Go ahead. Start it from the beginning. So they got life. Listen. Weeping and mourning. That's the accountability setting in. And again, that's at the hands of men. Let alone when Christ gives you your sins for doing evil. So IT, skip, skip down a couple of seconds. As you can see, as you can see, they couldn't handle that accountability. Once the realization set in on what they got an answer for what they did, oh, it was a problem. You see them pass, look at them. They passing out. They physically passing out. They physically can't hold themselves together because they're being held accountable now. Can you imagine what it's going to be like on Judgment Day if you got to face a sentence instead of a reward? Hey, skip, skip about 10 more seconds, IT. Watch, watch, watch what happens as they're rolling her out. So here we are being rolled to the lake of fire. Well, in their case, they're, being, they're getting ready to serve their time. But this is us getting ready to go to the, the lake of fire. Look, they're screaming, they're wailing. Now, they're taking mama out there. But now, let's, let's watch. Let's watch the other one as she roll out. Look at her. Watch this. You hear it? That's her trying to breathe. That, that reality that set in, that accountability. I'm holding you liable for the things that you've done, for your actions. Look at her. She can't even walk. She can't even help herself. Hey, IT, rewind, rewind them last 10 seconds back. Uh, going through that door. Terrible, isn't it? That's how you want to look on Judgment Day, right, Israel? That's, that's, that's how we going out, right? We love sin so much. Sin is pleasurable to us. We love it so much. This is your demise. So how do we avoid that? The next one's going to be the, it's, it's called pointing of the finger. finger. That's going to be the next one. So give me that, uh, give me uh, Psalms 32 and 5. How do we avoid having that punishment going out like that? Okay. You got to acknowledge your sins. And then you got to abstain from them. Start keeping God's laws. Psalms 32 and verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 32, verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. Hold on, let me get there. Let me get there. All right, go ahead. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. I acknowledge my sin. That goes into confession and being held accountable. You understand that you know what you did was wrong, and now you're going to go talk to the Most High about it, confess to him that you know it was wrong, and then you're going to abstain from it. That's going into your repentance. Read. And my iniquity have I not hid. And you wasn't shamed of it. Yeah, it's a shameful thing, but you're not going to be shameful to the point of where you're going to allow it to take your salvation. Read. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. I said, I will what? I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. No, I'm going to blame somebody else. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. No, no, no. I'm going to point the finger because it's always somebody else's fault. 
I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. You're going to confess your own transgressions. You're going to stand up and acknowledge, hey, I did wrong. I was in the midst of what? Fornication. Uh, I was watching uh, pornography. Uh, I was uh, smoking that weed and doing the drugs. I was at the club before I came in for the sack. You're going to address those things. You're going to acknowledge those things. Read. Is that it on that verse? No, sir. Keep reading. And thou forgavest my, excuse me, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. So God says when you confess those things, when you are held accountable for those things, you hold yourself accountable, you confess it, God says he'll forgive you for those things. There's still a judgment coming, but you be forgiven of those things. So give me Isaiah 58 verse 9. You got about what, 20 minutes. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 9. Then thou shalt then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here am I. So here it is. The most high is telling us now, when you read this, it, it, it was going into us fasting the wrong way. But God is putting us back on the right steps into how he wanted us to fast. And he says, with these things, if you're doing it the right way, if you're doing it the way I tell you, then when you call, like he says in verse 9, I will answer. And he says, you will cry. And what he says? And he shall say, here am I. And he's going to be here for us in our time of sorrows and needs. Read. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke. If, if you take away from you what? If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, Read. the putting forth of the finger. The, the putting forth of what? The putting forth of the finger. There it is right there. Re finish the verse. And speaking vanity. And speaking vanity. So the putting away of the finger meaning what? I got to point my finger at somebody else. It is always somebody else's fault. I will never take accountability. And, and you know what is so sad about it, especially in today's time, it's a lot of our sisters that do that. Brothers do it too, but not so much as the sisters. And I, I come to that realization when I was looking for some examples for this class. I was like, I can't believe this. <laughs> when I put in accountability, <laughs> it was all sisters on. I said, oh my goodness. I said, I got to find something for the brothers too. But right now we got to talk at the sisters. They made the best example on this one right here. Putting the way of the finger. Uh, give, me, give me that first one or that next one. The pointing of the finger. Yeah, that's it right there. Go ahead, let it play so they can hear. They can hear what's being said. Now watch. Listen how she, she doesn't want to take accountability. You're going you're gonna to hear Separate yourself from people who have an external locus of control. These are the type of people that when something bad happens to them, it is everybody. One of the best things you can ever do for yourself is separate yourself from people who have an external locus of control. These are the type of people that when something bad happens to them, it is everybody else's fault but their own. They take Pause. zero accountability for their actions. So he says, the best thing you can do is if there's somebody who is not taking accountability for their actions, do what? Separate yourself. The scriptures tell you that. If thou be amongst the indiscreet, do what? Observe the time. <laughs> You're a, let me hurry up and move away from this individual. Because he's leading down a path that's not right. He or she is leading down a path that's not right. Finish that. Go ahead, IT. Play it. It's in fact, when you try to hold them accountable, they make you feel guilty for doing so. They make you feel like you owe them an apology. So be mindful of these Pause. people or you will often find... You heard what he said? He said when you try to hold them accountable, they want to make you feel guilty. You, Hey, brother, no, you, what you did was wrong. Oh, no. What you mean? What you talking about? Oh, man, you just, you just mad because of this. Or oh, you just said this. You just said that. Or you just doing this because of this. It's always another reason other than their own actions. And they refuse to take accountability for the things that they're doing. Go ahead and finish that and then give me the next uh, video. Yourself and everybody else to be the problem and not them. So it says you, you that type of person is everybody else's fault. It's never them. They will never point the finger back at themselves. And again, like I said earlier, thanks to all these false religions, thanks to all of this, these crazy ideologies, these pastors who won't be accountable for teaching the word of God, <laughs> this is what we end up with. People don't want to take accountability.
Okay, so go ahead, go ahead, I tell you, got it pulled up the round table. Now here, here's the putting away, the pointing of the finger. God says, don't do this, but watch this, the pointing of the finger. I want y'all to look at these fingers. Go ahead, I tell you. Thank you guys for having me. And that's why men are the problem. <laughs> hey, hey, start it again, see if you can yeah. get paused on one of them fingers. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. And that's why men are the problem. <laughs> Y'all see that? Pointing other fingers. God said, don't do that. But look at what's going on. Every last one. All he did was come in and say, thanks for having me. Oh, it's your fault. Keep going, IT. Keep going. All I did was sit down. Gaslighting. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say anything yet. Invalidating our feelings. Mm. How Pause. did I offend you? Is that deflection? Do you, you know? Do you know that this is a? Uh, this is how brothers and sisters act today. This is how brothers and sisters act. If it's something wrong in that woman's life, she has automatically it's the man's fault. You try to hold, try to hold a woman accountable today, now especially if she's not repented. If she's not repented, what happens? This right here, deflection, the pointing of the finger. Let me go get my girls gang, and we're going to gang up on you and, and tell you how bad you are. Instead of me humbling down and listening to what the scriptures say, or even me taking the form of my own responsibilities. Go ahead, finish that one. I'm, I'm going to call. Look, look, they're, they're happy about it. That's this new generation. No accountability for nothing. Pointing other fingers. You see that? The pointing other thing. You know what? I want to take one of them fingers. I'm going to do that, that major pain trick on them. You show you a little mind. Take your trick off that pain. Snap your fingers. Point your fingers at me. Mm. Yeah. And in the day of judgment, you can get some mercy. Right? Uh, let's get, uh, get that Proverbs 22 and 6 and IT. Pull that one up. It says accountable for the baby, the, the little girl with the little baby doll. Accountable, accountability. Now, I like this one because there's so much accountability going in it because you have uh, the parent that's actually, or the school, whatever this is, it's a program. I guess you had one of those little uh, babies' dolls you got to take care of, and it cries, you got to feed it, you got to do all of that. So she's being taught a lesson in this video on being accountable for the baby, and at the same time, the parents is, is, is watching her go through the process trying to hold her accountable. Let's look and see what happens, because here's, here's what the world glamorizes right there. The single mothers, especially in, in, in ours, in, you know, black, Hispanic, Native Americans, single mothers. This, this is the glamorous life here, to be a title of a, not a wife, but a baby mama now. Zero accountabilities, but let's let's see how well this goes for us when those when that reality sets in and there's responsibilities that you got uh, up on to. Let's see how this. Let's see how well it went for her. Go ahead and play it, it. How it started. Yeah, yeah, especially with the team. I'm trying, how it went. <laughs> so look, look. So you gotta she gotta acknowledge the baby and then she gotta make it stop crying. Hmm. So. Oh, she got it. Seemed, seemed like an easy thing, right? Now, she got to do this on her own. Remember, this is single mother. Single mothers. This is what they don't show you behind the scenes. Look, look, she just started. Now, she only had to have this thing for a weekend. So, three days. Let's see what happened in three days. Let it play. Oh, baby, shit got real. Huh? We say, it got real now. Look, baby crying. The bottle ain't helping. <laughs> the baby ain't acknowledging him. Look at it. This, this is life. This is what they don't show you. She was over it. Look, she done. Then she was okay. Oh, wait a minute. She, she made it. She gave up nope. again. Gave up on it. Then I ended up with the damn baby. Not, not a mama I got the baby. Now the mama got the baby. Ain't that how it happened in real life? Huh? You hooked up with the girl. You, she's going to keep the baby. 
Y'all had a baby. Y'all didn't get married. She's a single mother. It start off good, then it's bad, and it's good, and it's bad. Now she's giving up. That's what you're hearing latest now. You hear case after case about these women that are abandoning, these single mothers that are abandoning the children. Like I said, I was looking at one, and, and, and uh, it was the mother left the daughter for like three days by herself, five days, something like that, while she went clubbing, celebrating her birthday. Didn't even tell nobody that the child was going to be there, but just left, up and left. It's terrible. But that's life. That's, that's accountability. That's responsibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ostriches. So read that. Proverbs 22 and 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Train up a child in the way he should go. So it says train up a child in the way that she was go. So that what you was looking at on the screen, that is what not to do. Yeah, 22 and 6. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. What not to do. That's what we was watching. Don't go out here to be a single mother <laughs> or, sing, right. or even try to be a single father. It take, like I said, take a village to raise a child. I know when uh, we was growing up, oh, my goodness, everybody was in your life. School teachers in your life, principal in your life, neighbors in your life, mother in your life, father in your life, grandparents in your life. You get in trouble, you had about five or six ass whoopings coming that day, bro. Yeah, you had about five or six ass. Everybody whooped your behind because everybody wanted to make sure that you was on the right path, and they didn't give a damn. They will whoop your ass. They will beat you, beat you, beat you, then call your parents and say, hey, he over here, blah, blah, blah. Mama come home. She mad. She upset. She beat you, beat you. I'm going to tell your daddy. Now daddy get now he coming home. At the end of the day, you, you didn't even want to sit down. You would just, I would just stand there and just be numb. I had to wait for the pain to go away before I could sit down and just, <sighs> man, you're horrible, horrible. But read that. Train up a child. Read. Proverbs 22, verse 6, mm -hmm. train up a child in the way he should go, mm -hmm. and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So we've got to teach, we've got to teach our children the proper ways. Like it says, we should be studying and keeping God's laws, keeping these commandments, and then we're supposed to teach them to our children as well. When we get up, when we go on to work, when we're by the way, when we go to bed at night. The whole time, teaching them the way of how to go. So, um, oh, yeah, this one here, the modern man. Go ahead, IT, play that real quick. Modern men want a traditional woman, but they don't want to be a traditional hey, man. Hey, pause real so quick. So you pause. want a woman to come. So here it is now. This this is the new woman on scene now. They want to be so-called, I'm going to say so-called alpha women. They want to be the ones in charge. They think they're equal to a man. But I want y'all to listen to how things go when this man steps up and shows, hey, I am a man, you are a woman, and I'm going to put you in your place. It's the same, It's you know, it, it, it'll talk for itself. Go ahead, IT. Home from a job, clean, cook, do the laundry, take care of the kids, and you guys are both going to work. Do you see how that don't make sense? No, it does it make makes sense. sense. And yes, I do want you to I do will. that. Oh, you're oh. telling me that. He said, what? It does make sense. That's your job. <laughs> that's, your, that's what you're supposed to do. Hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to hold you accountable for it. And guess what? We are both in captivity. So if you wanna, we want to be on this level here, well, guess what? It might take both of us working. Guess what? That's a part of the sacrifice. Okay. And not only that, but your responsibilities ain't the same responsibilities as mine, meaning a woman has her responsibilities she needs to be, and a man has his responsibilities that he needs to be. And they're all defined right here in God's laws. Okay? Yeah, you want to be a woman? Okay, Proverbs 31. You want to be a man? Oh, uh, what is it? Uh, Second Kings, the way of a man? Huh? Uh, back it up about 10 seconds and go ahead and play it, IT. Going to work. Do you see how that don't make sense? No, it does it make sense. sense. And yes, I do want you and to I do that. Well, you're uh, telling me that yeah. a woman has to go work like a man every day, and a man goes work, and he's tired oh. when he gets home. So you hear that? You hear the octaves in her voice? How it went up? She's pointing the finger now. Now she's aggressive. Now she's mad. Now she's upset. You gotta answer to me. I'm gonna hold you accountable. No, no. Let's see how it goes. Why? Why is it he puts in a check so small? He put in checks so smooth. Go ahead, play that. A woman's not tired. She has to clean, cook, do the dishes, do the laundry. Are you kidding me? First of all, yelling doesn't mean you're winning an argument. 
it's a sign of low intelligence. Bonk Your point is <laughs> invalid, and you sound like the rest of these unwedded women talking mm. about, I'm going to go to... He said what? Yelling is a what? A sign of low intelligence. So you think you getting over because you getting you getting big mouth, they want to point the finger, the, the neck go to rolling and the head shaking and the and the big uh umbrella eyelashes, umbrellas go to flashing all over. So you think they think they doing something. He said, No, that's a sign of low intelligence. And I'm not finna argue with you. I'm not finna stoop down to your level. I'm gonna put you in check and you gonna do what I'm telling you to do. Keep finish playing. Work like you. Do you want me to cook, clean? If that was the case, so what? Yes, you're gonna cook, clean, do this and do that. And guess what? He taking the trash out. He fixing the house. He making sure this. They all mm. have different responsibilities That's and ridiculous. different roles. A lot of modern day women don't even know that they're not fit to be a wife. Mm. And you think I'm not fit to be a wife? Pause. <laughs> all right. So, brothers, do you think she fit to be a wife? No, sir. Huh, sisters? Hell no. <laughs> That, hey, 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 brothers, is that what y'all looking forward to at the house? Really? Huh? No, I, I hope not. I hope not. Hey, you ain't got to worry about the sisters in here. They repented sisters. No, they repented sisters. So find you one that's keeping God's laws. And, yes, and don't be hasty to credit. Prove a friend. That's Make right. sure she's willing to be held accountable. Hey, go away from that one. Give me that last one. The last one. That, uh, uh, what's his name? Mitch from Ugly Money about the divorce. Uh, yep, that's it right there. That's it right there. We're gonna we're gonna use. I'm gonna play this one. Then we're gonna read two verses. And we're gonna be out of here. All right. So go ahead with that one. This one is pretty self-explanatory too. Now this one is going into men and women holding themselves accountable. So let's let's hear what he's got to say. He's got. He's. I don't think he's repented, but I think he kind of knows a little bit of truth because he's actually speaking some wisdom here. All right. So go ahead, it. Because black women think that they just got a better option. Okay, you don't need the black man to pay your rent. Okay. Section A. You don't need the black man to eat. Food stamp. You don't need the black man to take care of that baby. Medicaid and Medicare. You don't even need the black man for cereal. Wick. Pause. So you have. So do you hear what's going on? He's saying accountability has been taken away from you from by these other nations, particularly America. We take the black man out of the home. We ain't going to hold him accountable. You know what? We're going to still hold him accountable for the things going on in the house. But he's not going to be in the house. And we're going to replace him and make it easy for you, black woman. We ain't going to give you no accountability. You just call on us. We're going to give you the food stamps. We're going to give you the Section 8. We're going to give you the WIC. And we're going to give you a black man hell because that's what you want. That's what the woman wanted in the last video, right? She wanted to give that man hell and walk all over him. So guess what? This country's going to help you do that by separating y'all, dividing y'all, keeping you from your salvation at the end of the day because you didn't understand that you need to take accountability. Go ahead, continue to play. Goddamn, you have turned your back on Tyrone for Joe Byron. And the moment that you don't have Joe Byron's house clean, when they come inspected, they're going to kick your black ass out the street. Mm. Tyrone just wanted you to cook, clean, and shut up. But Joe Byron say, oh, well, we'll give you this house for $50 a month or whatever in this section. Say what? Or whatever, as long as you don't let oh. Tyrone stay over here. So you see what's going on? And that's the end game. That's what these other countries want for you. They, they, they prosper when you are in sin. They get up over you when you are in sin, when you don't want to be held accountable, when you don't want to take on responsibilities. That's how they stay on top of us, by keeping us in the midst of sin, by making it easy for you to sin. You ain't even got to lift a finger now. All she got to do is complain, and, and, and the, the, the process starts. You could be happily married for years, have children, everything been going fine, she watches a TV program and then has a bright idea and then tries to execute on that. And now all hell breaks loose. All hell breaks loose. You went from being a happy home to a broken couple. To, a, to that loud chicken head that was up there earlier. And that broke down man that don't want to pick his head up. Keep playing. Okay. See, that is, you don't see that agenda? I do see. I see. I, I believe in that agenda. And they say, black women, you don't need this man to stay and be a father to this kid. Child support. Mm, that's women, a big one, man. No accountability. Out with your husband. Alimony. 
That's and another. Incentivize y'all to leave us. And a lot of women haven't woke up to the goddamn play. They've been the f out of us, bro. They turned us against each other, gave y'all the chicken, and y'all sold us out. That's the way of the world, ain't it? That's what you see when you see this unrepentant new generation. Is it in a nutshell? It's a playbook, and they got it lined out for you. But if you pay attention, you can you can uh, evade that thing. All right, so that was the last video. We got what maybe two minutes. Actually, it's that time. I want to finish this. Uh, Ecclesiastes twelve and thirteen and fourteen. We'll end it on those on that note right there. Ecclesiastes twelve, thirteen and fourteen. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the conclusion at the end of the day, at the, the, the end of all, all said, all done. Read. Fear God and keep his commandments. Hold yourself accountable. Fear God and look and see what needs to be done. What is the requirement? Read. For this is the whole duty of man. This is your only purpose. Be accountable for keeping God's laws. It's not that hard, read. For God shall bring every work into judgment mm -hmm. and every secret thing, mm -hmm. whether it be good or whether it be evil. So keep that in mind as we continue to go on through these days. You're going to be held accountable. And everything that you said, everything that you do, everything that you think is going to be brought out into judgment. You're going to be held accountable for it. So why not make it a good accountability instead of a bad accountability? What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models.